Hey everybody, let's learn some ratio and proportion. Now this is the one of the most important skills you're going to learn mathematics wise in this course. You'll use this all the time in retail pharmacy and institutional pharmacy. So first of all, I want you to learn what ratio and proportion is and then secondly, and obviously this is more important, I want you to know how to apply that, how to be able to use ratio and proportion to solve common pharmacy problems. Let's take a look at it. First of all, let's talk about just what ratio is. Ratios are commonly seen in a pharmacy. You're going to see some amount of something per some other amount of something. For example, here on the slide I have 20 milligrams per milliliter. So that's how many milligrams of drug there's going to be in a milliliter of solution. Um, so you can see 20 milligrams of drug per milliliter of fluid. You, this can also be expressed in parts. I can have a one-to-one -one solution. Um, imagine if there's two different parts of a solution, the drug and then the solution itself, one-to-one -one will have uh, equal parts, one-to-one. -one. Two-to-one will have twice as much uh, of the product in the solution, okay? And then three to two-to-one, now obviously we have six total parts, three parts, two parts, one parts, add them together, six, and then they'll be broken down to um, three times as much as the last portion, the second part will have two times as much as the last portion, and then the last portion is the one itself. So that you'll see in parts, the one to one, the two to one, many times and probably more commonly, you'll see it as the milligrams per milliliter. That's a really common way to see it. Now let's talk about proportion. Proportion is whenever we have something on the sides of the equation that are the left side is equal to the right side. On this example, it's a really easy to understand example. Everybody's familiar with one half. 1 over 2. Well, check out the right side of the equation. 5 over 10. 5 is half of 10, just like 1 is half of 2. These two are equal ratios on each side. That's very important for this lecture to understand that particular concept. It's that 1 over 2 is the exact same thing as 5 over 10. 1 doubled is 2. 5 doubled is 10. I could put another one, another equal sign on the other side of that that put 10 over 20. It all says the same thing. It all says one half. So now where we're talking ratio and proportion, kind of putting them together, this will help almost all pharmacy math problems. You'll use this many times over as well as another method called factor labeling which we'll discuss in another lecture. You want to learn this backwards and forwards. Know it, know it, know it. It will jump up on you on the test. It will jump on you in your career. Okay, in some fashion this is going to be tested on your certification exam, whether it be directly or it may be a step in a multi-step process in a question. Um, this can be used when two rates uh, or equations are directly related to one another. So for instance, when I had milligrams per mil earlier, the other side of the equation or of the equals sign will need to say milligrams per mil as well. So milligrams will need to be up top, mils will need to be at bottom. If I were to say miles per hour, miles would need to be up top, hour would be at the bottom. Okay, It needs to stay the same on both sides of the equal sign. Let's check out an example of ratio and proportion. Let's imagine you're cruising down the road. Okay, You need to get some gas and you look up at the gas station, $3.99 a gallon. Man, what's the luck? Um, depending on where you live, that's either a great price or a horrible price. But you know you only want five gallons of gas. Okay, Money's a little tight. Um, so how much is this going to set you back? $3.99 a gallon. Well, what rate have you been given? I explain rate as something that gives you some quantity of something per something else. So the rate I'm given is $3.99 per gallon. That's a rate. What rate do I need? Well, I need to know how much money per five gallons. How much money per five gallons? So let's take a look at how we would figure this out. First of all, let's set it up like this. I know that 399 is equal to one gallon. So that's going to be on the left side of the equation. 399 per gallon. And it's per one gallon. So when you read that up uh, on the sign, 399 per gallon. The right side of the equation, it's some unknown amount on the top over five gallons. Now notice this. The top of both sides of the equation are both dollar signs. Okay, So we want the same unit. It's not dollar signs on this side and you know European pounds on the other side. Uh, we could convert that, but it would take a different type of uh, method. Here, the same thing on the top, same thing on the bottom. Dollars on top, gallons on the bottom. 
So what we're going to do is all we have to do is solve for the unknown. You can put the unknown as X. It's the easiest thing. Put it for any letter you want. B, C, we'll just call it X over here. So we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to cross multiply the top and the bottom uh, uh, in a diagonal fashion. So you can see the red arrow here to help you with that. It'll be one gallon times X dollars. Then we'll also cross the other side, $3.99 times five gallons. Each of those red arrows is going to give us one side of a new equation. So we've cross multiplied and I've now got X dollars times one gallon equals $3.99 times five gallons. Okay, so now all I have is one unknown. So you cross multiply. I want you to really understand that. 399 times five gallons equals one gallon times X dollars. So all you have to do is cross multiply. I'm gonna divide one gallon from each side, which will leave me X by itself. And on the other side, you can see on this slide right here exactly what it shows. It shows the 399 times five gallon over one gallon. The gallons will cancel each other out. You can cancel out labels, not just numbers. And then I just have 399 times five. So whenever I figure that out, I will come up with $19.95. You have a 20 spot in your pocket, you'll definitely be able to get your $5 a gallon at this rate. We've done the driving example. How about a nice pharmacy example? Um, so let's imagine tetracycline, 500 milligrams per five mils. I might also call that tetracycline, 500 milligrams per teaspoon. This is going to be referred to as the concentration or strength. Something with a little more, let's say a thousand milligrams per teaspoon would have a higher concentration or a higher strength, lower if it was lower than 500. So the example is give 250 milligrams twice daily for five days. In your head you're thinking you're probably reading BID times five days. So how many milliliters are you going to dispense? This is of utmost importance if you're going to be typing in a prescription in a retail pharmacy or in an institutional pharmacy. You need to know how many mils to dispense. You can't just give them the big 473 mil bottle. You have to know how much to dispense when the doctor wrote it. So we're going to start out by finding how many milliliters per dose. Not how much I'm going to give them in the bottle, but just how much they're going to need per dose. So let's take a look at this prescription that says tetracycline, remember that is sumycin, tetracycline 500 milligrams per 5 mils, and the, and the prescription was written for 250 milligrams twice a day for 5 days. And the question was how many mils will I dispense? Well, on this, I'm just going to get what I know, which is 500 milligrams per 5 mils. And over here, I'm going to put 250 milligrams, which is how much we're taking per dose, but I don't know how many mils they're going to be doing. Well, because the same unit is on the top and the same unit is on the bottom, I can cross multiply. If one of these were in grams, I would need to first convert it to milligrams to make them match on each side. But since they are the same, I can go ahead and cross multiply and just say 500 milligrams times X mils equals 250 milligrams times 5 mils. At this point, all I have to do is solve for X. I will put 500 milligrams over here and 500 milligrams over here. Now all I have to do is solve for X. Whenever I cancel out the milligrams, the answer will be in mils, and the answer in your calculator is 2.5 mils. But that is the answer per dose, not the answer uh, that I asked for is how many mils will we dispense. Well, if it's per dose, we have to decide how many times per day it's taken. Well, I can see it's twice a day, so it's going to be 2.5 times 2, which of course is 5 milliliters. But we're doing it for 5 days, okay? So 5 milliliters times 5 days is of course 25 mils. 
And that is the answer to the question. It was how many meals will we dispense when you get the prescription of 250 milligrams twice a day for five days? The answer is 25 mils. All right, so you learned that one off the blackboard. Let's do one more, this time doing a pharmacy example using the drug aminophilin. Imagine you have a 10 milliliter vial of aminophilin and it is 25 milligrams per milliliter. Per milliliter. How many milliliters do I need to inject if the doctor asks for 75 milligrams. So let's take a look at it. Let me just write what we have here. We have imenophilin. This is what they call a bronchodilator to kind of bring the lungs back open. And it's 25 milligrams per milliliter. And we have a 10 mil vial of it. So the question was how many mils must be injected if the dose is 75 milligrams? Well again, I'm gonna write down what I have. 25 milligrams per milliliter, and of course that's per one milliliter. And the question was how many do we need to get to get 75 milligrams? So it's 75 milligrams over X milliliters. So again, you can probably look on here and see that we have milligrams on each side. Milligrams on the top, milliliters on the bottom. Again, if it was in grams, I would want to convert it to milligrams. Or we could convert milligrams to grams. The point is, on top needs to be the exact same units as on the bottom. So milligrams, milligrams, mils, mils. I can cross multiply. And that's 75 milligrams times one milliliter in that equals 25 milligrams per x milliliter or times x milliliter in this case. I can do 75 times 1 is 75, 25 times x is 25x but I need to get rid of this 25 I'll do the exact same thing to the other side. I'll get rid of my labels since I know they're on the numerator and the denominator. And I can see I have left 75 milliliters over 25 milliliters. You can put 75 over 25 in your calculator. You may be able to do it in your head, but in the end you will get that X equals 3 mils. So that's the answer to the question in this one. No extra steps here. How many mils must be injected to give a dose of 75 milligrams? Well, if 25 is in one, then uh, 75 milligram are in three milliliters. All right, you've done two blackboard problems. Let's check out a third. Let's imagine you have a prescription that calls for 90 capsules. Pretty common, especially if it was given three times a day, 90 capsules, that would be a one month supply. But you have 90 capsules with 20 milligrams per capsule. Now how many milligrams will you need to weigh out to make that prescription? Let's check it out on the blackboard just to see how that would be accomplished. So this is kind of like a compounded prescription. Um, I don't have a name for the drug and we could put anything really, but I'm just gonna put drug 20 milligrams, number 90. Don't even worry about the directions here because we're just worrying about making the drug. So the question was, how many milligrams are you gonna to need to weigh out to be able to make this drug? Well, let's just go with what we do know. I have 20 milligrams are gonna be in one capsule. On the other side, I'm wondering how many milligrams are gonna be in 90 capsules. So I know 90, but I don't know this, X milligrams. So again, I'm gonna use ratio and proportion to be able to find out how many milligrams are in 90 capsules. So since I have milligrams on the top and capsules on the bottom, I can cross multiply. One last time I'll say it because I just don't want you to get confused. You need the same units on the top as on the other side on the top. Same units on the bottom as the other side on the bottom. If this were miles, it would need to be in miles on both sides. 
Um, you could use factor label to convert or whatever you need to convert, but in the end it needs to be the same units, top and bottom. So since it is, I'm going to do 20 milligrams times 90. And on this side, I'm going to say 1 cap, and this is caps here, I probably should have wrote that, times x milligrams. I can go ahead and get x by itself, and to do that, I'm just going to divide this side by 1 cap. I'm going to divide this side by 1 cap, and in the end, it'll be 20 times 90 is going to equal how much we're going to look for here. So I'm going to go ahead and get out my handy dandy calculator, because that'll help out quite a bit, and I'm just going to do 20 times 90 to get me 1800 milligrams. So whenever I figure this out it'll be x equals 1800 milligrams and that is the answer. So whenever I need to make this particular drug that we've just called drug I need to make 90 capsules each containing 20 milligrams in the end it's just going to be 1800 milligrams now, as you start to look at this, you're going to realize, as you even read the question, oh, that's 90 times 20. No problem with you doing that. That's an easy way to do it and a time-saving way to do it. In the end, uh, you'll want to start with this until you get comfortable with just kind of visually learning how to do that. Um, you will learn to do it, and then you'll do it much faster in the end. So the answer to this question right here is 1,800 milligrams. And that is ratio and proportion. This lecture was a little bit longer because I really want you to get it. It's very important to me that you understand ratio and proportion and how to figure it out. It will be often that uh, you'll see a given concentration from a drug and the doctor wants it in a certain amount of milligrams that the concentration does not come in. It isn't always a nice teaspoon for you to give. Sometimes it's something very odd, 3.43 milliliters the doctor is asking for, and you need to be able to calculate that or you risk a, a misfill and possibly even harm to the patient. Study this a lot. Uh, many times after these lectures, I'll tell you, if you'll study it a lot, you'll get one more question right on the test. This is one where I want you to study it a lot and you'll get several questions right on the test.